Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon and oh my God, we're going to talk about Twitter again. It is coming out that Twitter employees were apparently selling blue checks for up to $15,000. Yeah, if you wondered why you couldn't get a blue check, chances are you weren't greasing uh, the right palms of the right people. And uh, this might explain why some people got blue checks that maybe worked for certain organizations while others didn't because uh, I've read that if you spent a sizable amount of money on Twitter advertising, they would also give you and some of your staff blue checks and it's also random, you know, did they like you? Did they think you were notable? Did they like your politics, your tweet history? Uh, lots of really random things that are going to come to an end under Elon Musk because of course anybody, anybody can get verified for $8 uh, going forward. So we're gonna talk about that. Uh, we're gonna talk about some other changes that are being implemented in Twitter and everybody's acting like, uh, like it's the end of the world. I'm seeing so many comic book people and journalists out there like our world is ending. I'm like, yeah, because you had this place locked down. You did, you had a cozy little safe space, you had it locked down, and now Musk is coming in and being like, nah, power to the people, this is for everybody. And we can see in real time how much of a threat this is to certain people. You know, we wondered why you know certain news outlets get boosted, uh, why certain voices that don't have much of an organic following seem to be listened to more than they should be. And it turns out that, uh, yeah, a lot of it is is backdoor deals, backdoor deals at Twitter. So let's talk about this before we get into it any further. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 280, almost 281,000 subs here on Clownfish TV. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. Check us out on Spotify. I've been uh, uploading episodes on Spotify as well. You can watch video episodes on Spotify. It might be a couple days behind YouTube but uh, we are out there as well. All right, so this is coming from, uh, from republicworld.com. A lot of mainstream media outlets are not covering this, and the reason for that is it's going to blow the lid off of the truth behind Twitter's verification system that there was money involved. Uh, coming from Republic World, Twitter CEO Elon, Musk's, uh, Elon Musk acknowledges a major lapse on the platform relating to blue tick verifications days after he revealed his plans to charge $8 for it. Um, he said that uh, somebody said Twitter employees were selling verification for upwards of $15,000. This is a WSB chairman. The user further added that for certain accounts, mine included, they would refuse to verify you through the standard application and then privately offer to verify you for money behind the scenes and called for people to probe into the matter. Providing a brief response to this, Musk wrote, yup, on his Twitter handle. The Twitter CEO also pointed out how easy it has been to acquire a blue tick verification badge on the platform with the help of third-party apps. Acknowledging this, Musk wrote in another post, far too many legacy verified check marks were handed out often arbitrarily, so in reality, they're not verified. You can buy as many as you want right now with a Google search. Uh, piggybacking off of payment system plus Apple Android is a much better way to ensure verification, he added. Musk's remarks came after Shibatoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Dogecoin, opposed the idea of having to pay $8 a month for verification. Uh, Musk reveals his plans of paid verification. We know $8, he's been trolling people Eight dollars, eight bucks, guys, if you want to get verified. Now, I thought this was kind of ridiculous, but you go out to the Atlantic 10 years ago, and they actually said that, yeah, if you pay $15,000 or if you spend 15 grand in advertising, they'll give your account a blue check. And this was, this was 10 years ago. 
This was long before Elon Musk. This was under Jack Dorsey. We're going to talk about that. Um, they said, yeah, the blue checks don't come cheap if you aren't a household name. Uh, that might be a good thing. Uh, according to The Atlantic, we know firsthand how much power those blue check marks have on Twitter as we witnessed from uh, the fake yet briefly authenticated account purporting to belong to Wendy Deng. They've also become status symbols since the company shut down the process to apply for them in 2010. Nowadays, only famous people can get them. Uh, but you can buy, get one too, if you spend enough money on Twitter advertising, or if you get famous enough to incite impersonation issues, which makes for a nifty celebrity or over $15,000 test next time you follow a verified account. Here's an ad age. Verified accounts aren't officially for sale. Twitter advertisers who spend a minimum of $15,000 over three months can get one. According to a media publisher who has been trying to get his magazine's account verified, when he asked a Twitter sales rep who had been in contact with him how to go about it, she replied that the only path to verification or if an account has had impersonation issues or if an advertiser has spent at least $15,000 over three months. This was 10 years ago. So this has been a known issue at Twitter that you had to pay to play. So basically all Elon Musk is doing is letting normies pay a hell of a lot less. I, I think it's hilarious. You've got people out there like AOC complaining about paying $8 when it wouldn't surprise me if there were celebrities and uh, government officials, maybe that weren't, maybe they weren't worthy of verification, like the mayor of whatever town. But if you spend the money, you spend the bucks, maybe you're, maybe you're uh, stupid, you know, super woke, you know, left-leaning video game blog isn't worth anything, really. But if your corporate owner spends $15,000, uh, they can get you a blue check. And then anybody who writes for you can also get a blue check. You, you see what I'm saying? The whole thing is gamed. Like, you're, you're complaining now, but the whole thing has been gamed for years. Years. And all Musk is doing is blowing the lid off of it. And, uh, yeah, you're... you're uh, the star on your belly isn't going to mean as much as it used to, uh, for sure. Now, here's some other things that are supposedly in the pipeline uh, under Musk on Twitter. Twitter is soon going to add the ability to attach long-form text to tweets, ending the absurdity of notepad screenshots. I love this. People are, like, putting these manifestos up. They're, like, doing a notepad screenshot. Followed by creator monetization for all forms of content. That is... Very interesting. Um, they've got to do something better. And he was asking last night, he was asking, you know, what can we do better than Twitch? What can we do better than YouTube? And my own personal opinion is you need to not put the onus of paying content creators on the audience because, you know, so much it's like, hey, beg your subscribers to give you super chats, beg your subscribers to throw stars at you or throw bits at you or whatever, whatever other stupid idiotic currency, fun sounding currency they're using on the platform. And really it's, you know, the platform making money off of your audience, keeping creators on their platform, taking a cut. You know, they need to get some advertisers. Now advertisers are backing out. Could be some of them are backing out because they were buying blue checks and they're like, oh shit. You know, I, I don't know. I think they'll be back. I think if you bring normies to the platform, they'll be back because I, I don't think that, Twitter is really reaching normal people. Grandma's not using Twitter yet, right? Or if she was, she bailed around 2016, 2017 when it got really freaking weird. So I think if you bring normal people back, I think uh, Twitter will be a lot more appealing to advertisers. And again, if the user base is there and it's made up mostly of normal people with fringe voices on the left and right, they can be filtered out. Um, it would become very attractive to advertisers. Right now, it's not. And I have to wonder if that wasn't just a way of gaming the advertising revenue. Be like, oh, hey, we'll give you a blue check if you spend X number of dollars. You know, that's that's how they do it. We'll keep your blue check. We'll boost your tweets. I mean, how far down does the rabbit hole go? We'll put your uh, your tweets. We'll make your hashtag trend if you pay us. We'll uh, put your tweets at the top of uh, search results if you pay us. You know, so what's what's actually going on here? You know. Uh, who knows? Uh, it's going to be really interesting once they start digging in. And this would probably explain why 
Musk terminated as many people as he did. Now, the word is I'm, I'm hearing from people that they have to go back and rehire uh, some of the people they fired because they fired the wrong people. So, I don't know. I don't know, guys. But um, apparently, I think he wanted to get people out the door as fast as he could, because if you've got a bunch of disgruntled activists working at your company, they're going to destroy your platform on the way out. You know, and I think he also wants to get in there before they can scrub the evidence. And apparently they already started scrubbing the evidence. And I think he's going to my personal feeling is that he's going to walk away owning Twitter for a lot less money than he promised to pay before it's all said and done. That's 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 my gut feeling on it. And I think he knew this was going to happen. He knew that the uh, the head honchos were up to no good. They were trying to pull a fast one with the courts. Um, he's going to wind up owning it a lot cheaper. But it could be. But I don't know. I don't know. It's just a feeling. So NBC News, uh, Jack Dorsey. Um, I am Jack's smirking revenge. Um, apparently, he's not feeling that way. Uh, Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey apologizes after Musk's team begins mass layoff uh, days after the $44 billion takeover. I own the responsibility for why everyone is in this situation. I grew the company size too quickly. No, you didn't. Actually, Twitter was way behind everybody else. I apologize for that. No, he was behind Musk taking over. I mean, he hated, uh, was it Parag Agrawal? Hated that guy, hated the board. They pushed him out. This was his smirking revenge. You know, I think he's just putting on a show like, I'm so sorry you got laid off, guys. Oh, whoopsie doopsie. Don't blame me. Blame Elon. But he knew exactly what was going to happen. But nobody else had the money to take Twitter away from the board. Um, Twitter pointed out a tweet Dorsey wrote in April in which the former CEO praised Musk as the singular solution I trust to take over the company. I trust his mission to extend the light of consciousness. <laughs> he was maximally trusted and broadly inclusive. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, they said that in 2013, the social media platform had 2,000 employees. The number climbed to more than 7,500 full-time workers by the end of last year. They actually hired most of those people in the last couple of years. And a lot of them in, you know, uh, basically the censorship divisions of Twitter, which Elon Musk gutted immediately. I mean, Twitter in 2013 was still a pretty usable website. It was a pretty usable app. Actually, I would say peak Twitter uh, 2009 to like maybe 2013, 2014. And then as 2016 got closer, uh, it seemed like this company got more and more locked down uh, with the politics and it catered to one side of the aisle. Uh, almost exclusively. And then as everybody left Tumblr, they left one dumpster fire for another and they all migrated over to Twitter. And uh, here we are. So we'll see. Maybe Musk can, can roll it back. I'd be happy with a, a rollback to eight, 10 years ago. You know, I mean, you're going to have people you don't like on Twitter for sure. But if they can get rid of the spam, get rid of the bots and institute fair moderation, clear lines in the sand, rules that apply to everybody, uh, I think it would be a very usable platform. Going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.